Hey, Ellis, you want to hear a joke? Give me two beef gorditas. Yeah, I know. You want to hear a joke? They're not on the menu, so you just got to ask for them, and then you got to be real nice, okay? Don't give them any attitude, no lip. Why are you explaining this to me? I'm the one who orders for you every single time we do this. And half the time they don't make them because of your nasty-ass tone. Oh, shut up. I'll be nice, okay? You want to hear a joke or not? No, I don't. Just focus on your tone. Okay, here it is. Why did the old man fall into the well? Hello, can I take your order? Yeah, uh, get me two chalupas. Dude, no, I said gorditas. Calm down, man. Can I eat? Those are for me. Does that complete your order? Uh, no, I didn't even order a drink yet. Watch your tone, man. What would you like for your beverage? Medium Meliello. Will that complete your order? No, it doesn't. Uh, do you guys have gorditas? Oh, man, you don't ask for them. You just say what you want, and then they are forced to figure it out. I told you. Gorditas are no longer on the menu. I understand that, but you guys have pita bread, right? Yes. And you got all the other stuff that goes in them, right? Will that complete your order? And you fucked that up. No, I want two beef gorditas. Charge me for four chalupas, then, if that's the issue. They're the same thing, except one is crunchy. I'm aware of the food that we sell. Then I don't understand what's the problem. Nope, we done. Let's go to Herbert's and Gerbert's or some shit. No, we're here, and we're getting your fucking gorditas. Will that complete your order? Did you put the two gorditas on it? Pull ahead to the next window for your total. Tell me the total now. Your total will be ready at the first window. Tell me the total now, Todd. Tell me the total, you taco-making bastard. Your total is waiting at the window. Oh, fine. Just drive the fuck away from here, for real. What's the total, Todd? The total is this. There's a worker shortage nationwide. I've had to cover three people's ship this week alone because they're too sick to work. Truthfully, I'm not even feeling that well, but I need a big paycheck before Christmas so I can buy some gifts for my little brother and sister. Since my mom lost her job in November, money has been pretty tight. So in the spirit of the season, I'm asking you to give us in the food industry a break. We're doing the best we can for very, very little. All right, Todd. My name's Trevor. I'm sorry for raising my voice. You deserve to be spoken to like a real person. I am a real person. I know you are, and I think I can help. Does your little brother and sister like 50-year-old vinyl records? No, not really. Okay, well, that's all I'm really able to offer at the moment, so... What's the total? Your total comes to 654. That's the cost of two chalupas and a medium pop, Todd. We don't sell gorditas. <sighs> Why the old man fall into the well? What? Because he didn't see that well. I got that interview at noon. Oh, right. The new shoe store at the Mall America. Yeah, it's called the Soul Store. It's a new joint, and they need experienced managers. And better yet, you get a 50% discount, and I already spent half my money on Jordan's the way it be, so... Yeah. You can handle the store for three days a week, right? I handle the store all days, if we're being completely honest. I'm really the only one that does anything here. Well, clearly it's not enough, otherwise I wouldn't have to get another job. Sounds like Jenny is making you get another job. Hey, yo, you think I should change? I do, actually. You should stop being a huge dick. Do. I meant, do I need to change into a suit or something for my interview? Well, I think it depends on if you wear a suit at work. Are you going to be selling shoes in a full three-piece suit? Well, I don't know, but with that logic, if I was going to interview at, let's say, Foot Locker, I'd need to show up wearing a referee costume. Why do they wear those anyway? It doesn't make any sense. What do you mean it doesn't make sense? It's a sports store, like Foot Locker, right? Well, yeah, they sell shoes for sports, but what's a Foot Locker? A Foot Locker, like sports. What sport involves a Foot Locker? I don't know, it's just sports. Okay, how about this? Let's take the referees out of it. If I told you that in my crazy great uncle's basement, he had a foot locker, would you A, think he had some sport-related item, or B, 
assume he owned some kind of barbaric torture device that either removed or stored human feet. What would you pick? I'd pick A, the sport thing. I ask you again, then, what sport is it referencing? The sport where I banged your mom. Wow, with a quick wit like that, you're going to do great in your interview. I'm actually a little bit nervous. Maybe I'll eat a gummy before I head to the interview. Nah, you know what? No, I better not. Need to be clear-headed for this. I really want this gig. Well, then you shouldn't have ate a gummy right before you said that. Aw, damn, did I? And your interview is in, like, 12 minutes. Aw, damn, is it? Hey, you think you could give me a ride real quick? Sure, where to? I'm going to the ball. I know. All right, good luck. Did the gummy kick in? Nah. It must have been a weak one. <laughs> That's funny. You don't remember what Burno Benny said about the... Don't you remember what he said what they do? <laughs> I don't... I don't remember what he said. Yeah, that makes sense. Why does that make sense? Because if you did remember, you definitely wouldn't have taken one right before a job interview. You're gonna get really fucked up. Yeah. I think it's starting to kick in. You're gonna become a cat. What'd you just say? I said, good luck. I'm sure you'll do great. Go get him. Hello, Mr. Griggs. My name is Liz. Thanks for coming in today. Are you okay? Do you need anything? Damn, she's already asking questions. No time to prepare my shit. All right. Answer her question professionally. What? Oh, I was just asking if you need anything. Like what? There you go. Flip that shit. Put her ass on the hot seat. Um, water, I guess? Ooh, yeah, get that water. Ooh, that tastes good as a motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, yes, you'd like water? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me uh, grab one from the lunch area. Hold on one second. All right, so far, so good. This gummy is fucking stupid, though. Ooh. Just a few more questions, Ellis, and we be good. We be good. You got this. All right. And here is your water. Nah. Oh, um, okay. Uh, let's just jump into it, then. What excites you about retail? Damn, how long have I not said anything? What the fuck she asked me? Mr. Griggs? What's up? Oh, you high ass, you shouldn't have said that. Um, let's just move on. Um, on your uh, application, it says you co-own a record store. How many people have worked under you? Under me? Ooh, uh, over 15 for sure. 16 if you count that hot teacher in high school. Well, I don't think she was asking me about that. Damn. I also feel like I'm growing a tail. Um, I was actually more interested in your managerial background and if you were ever in charge of a team. Um, because the role here involves managing six team members. Is that something you think you can handle? What the fuck did Rubburn say before I got out of that car? Mr. Griggs, do you have any managerial experience? Water. Um, I'm sorry? Water. Oh, you want water now. Okay, here you go. Nah. Why? All right, dude, you're not getting this job. What we need to do is we need to get up, and we need to walk the fuck out of this mall, and we need to get home. Just stand up and walk out of that door. Why do I want to scratch shit and sleep on a shelf? Are you a cat? What'd you just say? I said, are you okay? No, you asked me if I was a cat. Are you a cat? I need to get out of here. You're a cat. No, I'm not. You're a cat. Why the fuck did you buy gummies that turn you into a cat? Don't be silly, Ellis. They don't actually turn you into a cat. They just make you believe that you turned into a cat. Hey, did you get the job? You comfy? You got enough room? Little tight, but I'm okay. Thanks for the ride and tickets. Oh, you're tight? 
Sorry about that. That's 100% my fault. My car only has a bench seat, and it's usually just Ellis and I in here, and we were always comfortable before, but I can see how this new situation could create a feeling of uh, uncomfortableness. Is uncomfortableness a word? How about uh, extreme annoyance? Does that make sense? You shouldn't be here. All right, let's just get to the concert. I've never seen the Stones, and they are on my list of must-see musical acts. It's pronounced ask. My favorite Rolling Stone song is Angie. I hope they play it. Interesting you say that. Do you know what that song is supposedly about? Um, I don't think so. Mick Jagger was sucking off David Bowie, and Mick's wife walked in. He felt so bad for her that he wrote Angie as an apology. Remember when you did that to me with Ellis? Did what? You banged him. But you didn't even write me a song. You didn't even reply to my DMs. You and I weren't dating. We went out once. I'm sorry if you got the wrong impression, It's Jim. not even true anyways. The Angie story? Keith actually wrote it. And it's all made up and not about anyone, so who cares? You know what song I hope they play? Oh, fun. Let me guess. Let me guess. Um, Satisfaction? God, no. Bitch. The fuck you just call her? The Sticky Finger song, Bitch. Jeez, loosen up, man. Don't show Jenny your violent side too early, right? Right? I actually love that song. Well, too bad. They're not even playing it. Bitch. I'll crash this car, motherfucker. What? We can't even talk about Rolling Stone songs right before Rolling Stones concert? Boy, glad you guys are tagging along. This is a lot of fun. How do you know they're not going to play that song? Uh, because of the internet. You ever heard of it, stupid? Oh, beat your ass. Yeah, the internet's where you send me all those angry DMs after we went out on only one date. A during-the-day date. Oh, good. Now I feel even worse. Cool. Well, I saw the set list from the Milwaukee show. They open Street Fighting Man, and they close with Satisfaction. Before that, they play Gimme Shelter, and that is when we will take off and beat the crowd out of here. I'm not getting stuck in the parking ramp again. I'm not leaving early. This is the last time I'm ever going to see the Stones. No, I'm not leaving early. Look, we can watch the songs you missed on YouTube the next day. You know how I hate parking ramps. Why do you hate parking ramps? It's none of your business, Jenny. Why? Are you going to try to bang the parking ramp now? That doesn't even make sense. You know what else doesn't make sense? A black guy with a heart on to see satisfaction. Of course, you're only half black. Uh, Jenny, did you know that? That he's only half black? The fact that Ellis is multiracial is one of the many reasons I love him. Wait, what did you say? I said, Ellis being multiracial is one of the many reasons I love him. No, before that, you called him mulatto. What? No, I said multiracial. Nope, you said mulatto. You basically called him the N-word. Really cool relationship you guys have. Doesn't sound toxic at all. You gonna keep this up all night? You know what, there's just too many cars here, man. I think we're gonna have to take off during Midnight Rambler. Possibly start me up. We'll have to see, I guess. Maybe after we can go to Grumpy's for a few beers. I'd love to say thank you for the tickets, Jim. Oh god, no, that would be terrible. We're gonna leave during Paint It Black. Hopefully the parking ramp's not too busy then. If you're scared of parking ramps, we can try for a spot on the street. You don't think I thought of that, Jenny? There are no spots on the goddamn street, and I'm not scared of parking ramps, okay? I just happen to not like the spiral parts. And when there's too many cars, and I have to inch down them in between two stupid other fucker people, I get very, very annoyed. Or as I like to call it, a case of the Jennies. I call it that because you are very annoying and very unlikable. Yep, alright, let's just drop us off here and we'll walk the rest of the way. Oh, what a great way not to pay for parking, awesome. You can't always get what you want. But sometimes you'll find, or you might, you might find, you'll get what you need.
This next song is one we haven't done yet on this tour, but it came in with a special request and we thought, why not? Dedicated to Jenny with the titty tattoo from her new friend Jim. Here is Anja. Did you guys know I wrote this about my ex-wife? Yeah. I was giving Ziggy Stardust a blowjob after tea one afternoon and whoopsies in walked in me wife. A bit saucy. Anyway, one, two, three, four. And Jeff. Oh god, 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 don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, oh god, oh god, oh god, Jesus fucking Christ, I perk on the hundredth goddamn level of this fucking thing, why won't it ever end? Oh, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, oh god, 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 Telling us that things will get much worse before they get better. In local art news, the internationally famous street artist known by millions as Banksy has apparently been spending some time in the Twin Cities. Did the famous artist strike on the side of this struggling Minneapolis business? Harrison Cole is here with the story. It was 48 hours ago when James Rugburn was alerted to something strange appearing outside the record store he and his friend Ellis Griggs own. Yeah, uh, DJ or floor boy helper guy came and said that somebody spaghettied on the wall outside. I asked him, what did you say? And he repeated, someone spaghettied on the wall outside. And I said, oh, you mean graffiti. His brain is different. And, uh, yeah. Outside was a real Banksy painting. A painting, yes. But is it an authentic Banksy painting? The artist's last piece was valued at over $45 million. For a business owner, a Banksy painting could mean financial stability for several lifetimes. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for him to want to pick a place like Pine Vinyl to do one of his masterpieces. We are kind of thought of as like the epicenter of culture and cool amongst the locals. So, it's so embarrassing. I'm actually embarrassed for him. Not everyone is convinced of the authenticity of the art. Firstly, it's terrible. Has the composition quality of a Home Depot ad. Secondly, the symbolism is pure cringe. This was clearly painted by a failed, miserable artist. Oh, did he say that? Well, I'm surprised he had time to form an opinion with all the rats in his coffee shop. What was your first impression when you laid eyes upon the painting? I thought it was inspiring. Beautiful. Basically a reality check in some funky kind of cosmic way. I think what it's saying is that, like, okay, this kid is clearly smart, right? He's trying to not only answer the question, but, like, being, you know, he's reaching out for something more, right? Something higher. But here comes the rain, right? Rain, meaning, I don't know, sadness, maybe? Uh, but it also means life, right? Water is life. Well, look at the book. What does it say on the spine of this book? The word life. So, I think it's saying that there is like, it's like a cycle. Life and death, it goes around and around. If I was gonna name this piece, I'd call it the concussion. Why? Because it makes brains die. We sat down with Banksy historian Walden Leonard and asked him if he thought this was an authentic Banksy. No. Why? Look at it. Look, people have opinions about art all the time. That's art. Look at, uh, I don't know, the Sistine Chapel or like this David statue. I mean, some people can look at the David statue and be like, no way, that's not good. Look, look at how big the hands are. And others are like, no, that's awesome art, right? Big hands are cool, you know? So what the critics say doesn't matter. If they think it's so easy, let them try to do it then. Did you paint the picture on the front of your store? What? What are you accusing me of? Did I, did I paint that picture? Uh, no. <laughs> 
I don't have the skill set to paint something that perfect. Why would I lie and say that I painted a uh, Banksy? Money. Yeah. No, I... I don't... I... This is a Banksy. Look at it. Look at it. The candle store across the street has some CCTV footage that includes the front of your store at the time of the incident. Would you like to see it? Nope. Take a look. It shows someone that looks exactly like you painting the picture on the front of your struggling business. Did you paint the picture on the front of your store? It's still a cool picture though. Isn't it? Wow, what a story. We followed up with Mr. Rugburn this afternoon and asked him what his plans are for the imposter Banksy painting that he embarrassingly painted himself, but as of air time we have not heard back which is expected. He must be absolutely mortified. Coming up after the break, local police crack a cold case with the help of a local pornography collector? Back after a short break, so stick around. Why are we up here right before a snowstorm? It's the first snowfall of the year, Ellis. I want to taste the first snowflake. Taste a snowflake? Jesus. So this is some weird personal thing you decided to drag my ass into, huh? Great. No, the real show comes later. There's a lunar eclipse tonight. It's going to be the longest one in 600 years, Ellis. What's a lunar eclipse? That when the, you poke a hole through the cardboard box? No, this is when the moon and the earth align with the sun. The moon will appear a burnt orange as the sun's light refracts around the edge of the earth. Refracts? Or is it retracts? Hey, yo, do I need to be part of this, though? Or could this be just a you thing? Wolves play the Spurs tonight. Hey, Ellis, you know what's really fucked up? Damn. Uh, no, what's fucked up? I've always hated how British people pronounce the word contribute. How do they say contribute? They say contribute. Okay. Isn't that annoying? Oh, hello. Would you like to contribute 40 pounds for King's Cross Abbey? Or something. Okay. But that's not the thing that fucks me up. What's the word for it when someone contributes something? Like, the actual thing. A contribution. Right? Okay. So when we're talking about a contribution, we change the pronunciation to the way the British say it. Otherwise we would say contribution. But we're saying it the British way, so the British people had it right the whole time. Doesn't that bother you? I feel like nothing in this world makes sense anymore, Ellis. <laughs> you make weird sounds when you cry. I can't control it. Look, I know you're going through something, okay? And I want you to find your way out of it. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave you with something my mom's once shared with me when I was looking for answers. What did she say, Ellis? Oh, cool, you just left. Thanks for manifesting my biggest fear into reality. Your mom sounds like a real lovely fucking person. <laughs> Hello there, friend. What? Who said that? Wow. The moon looks beautiful. Well, you don't look too shabby yourself. Huh. Maybe I am more of a sativa guy. Cool. Looks like you need a little reminder of how important you are. Do you know who I am, Mr. Moon? You're the most important person on the whole planet, James Rugburn. I'm the most important person on the whole planet? That can't be true. Oh, but it is, James. The future will reveal itself when it's ready. And when it does, you will believe. Does the future involve me finding a wife? It's all I really want. It's all I've ever wanted. Oh, so you want to know about your wife? You've seen her? Tell me about her. She's perfect for you. 
And she's waiting for you. How do I find her? With a very, very, very big telescope, of course. A telescope? I thought... I meant, like, should I start going to bookstores or community-organized things? I have the perfect telescope. Just hop in that rocket ship and I'll take you there. This is the best weed that I have ever smoked. Riding through a rocket in space Oh, you know what? I should have brought like a flag. I could have stuck a flag right in your face. I bet you don't like that though, do you? It doesn't really matter. Cool. Hey, where's that uh, telescope? Uh-oh, James. Here comes the Goo Garys. The what? The Goo Garys? Oh, yes, the Goo Garys. They're like dark matter monsters who suck the life out of anything they touch. They can destroy planets. They can destroy everything. Okay, tell them to get lost. I'm busy looking for my wife. Where's that telescope? Ah, why you have it wrong, Mr. Rugburn. I'm just a silly little moon. I don't have any control over the Goo Garys. Okay, then get the rocket ship going and get me the fuck off your face. You see, that's why I brought you here. Only you can destroy the Goo Garys, James. You have to. You must. What? You want me to stop the Goo Garys? How the fuck am I supposed to do that? By using your greatest talent, James. The reason of your great importance. But I'm not important, Mr. Moon. That's where you're all wrong. I'm single, lonely, I own a record shop that makes no money, I have two friends, and one of them I hate most of the time. I can write shitty little songs that are little rip-offs of other songs, and I can make a decent beefaroni. Does that sound like someone that can save the universe from space monsters? I have no talent. Think harder, James. It's the... You just have to believe it. Hey, Moon, what part of England are you from? It kind of kind of goes in and out a little bit. We're all gonna die, James. If you don't do something about it for once in your life, be a hero. Okay, fine, then just tell me. What is the secret talent that I have? You keep saying believe it. Believe what? What am I doing? I'm arguing with the moon as space monsters are trying to kill me. Even for me, this is pretty fucking out there. Wait. That's it. None of this is real. All these things I see as problems aren't real. It's just my greatest talent. The ability to make up imaginary bullshit to hold me back. I see it now. I believe, Mr. Moon. I believe. I believe that no one on this planet can make up more bullshit like me. So, if I can make up soul-sucking dark matter space monsters, I can also make up this. Hey, Goo Garys, suck my Milky Way. <laughs> you did it. You destroyed the Goo Garys, James. Now there's only one thing left to do. I see her. I see her, Mr. Moon. You're right. She's perfect. Now go find her, Mr. Rugburn, and don't delay. Thank you so much, Mr. Moon. You've given me everything I ever wanted. Oh, that's good. I'm glad I could contribute. Boy, are we doing Star Wars now? Because that felt pretty forced. Well, anyway. Riding on that rocket ship through space Back home again Yeah 
All right, we're all here. The first annual Pine Vinyl Gift Exchange can begin. What does annual mean? It means something that happens every year. Wait, we did this before? No, but I foresee us doing it in the future. So this is the first annual. But what do they call it if it's like the last of something? You know? Like the last time we do something. What do they call that? la 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 Christmas fun. Just glad you brought a present, to be honest. And you uh, stayed below the $40 mark, I'm hoping. Uh, $40? Yeah. Yep. I brought you something super special that I know you're going to enjoy. I'm very excited. Wow, DJ. I love your attitude. In the holiday spirit, I want to say how grateful I am to have you in my life. And I'm very excited to share tonight with you. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for making this first annual Pine Vinyl Gift Exchange something memorable. I'm so excited for you to get my gift. It's going to blow you away. Oh, damn, DJ. Did you wrap up a bomb? I didn't wrap it. My mom did. Okay, so your mom saw it. All right, all right. Have a little eggnog and chill out, Ellis. You have to open your heart to the season. What's all this Christmas shit? You always piss and moan about this time of year. I know I did, but I get it now. I have to be more open and willing to accept happiness. Damn, you're still on your weird bullshit, huh? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. Let the first annual Pine Vinyl Gift Exchange begin. I am open to the happiness and joy of this season. I am open to the happiness and joy of this season. I am open to the happiness and joy Every time of you season. say first annual, I keep thinking in my head, fist anal. What does fist anal mean? Well, DJ... When a man has climbed every mountain. Good thing I didn't say it. That and we're open to the happiness and the joy of the season, okay? Let's begin our celebration now. Everyone, put your gifts in the center of the table. Boy, DJ, yours is pretty big. I hope you get it, Rugburn. I think it'll blow you away. Yeah, you uh, mentioned blowing away before. Uh, and you said your mom saw the gift, right, DJ? Yeah, this is her idea. Oh, okay. That's actually kind of sweet. Tell her thanks. Hey, can I go first? Nice, Ellis. I knew you'd come around. And I think you're going to like one of the gifts on the table. I know I will. Wait, Ellis, you grabbed your own gift. That's not how it works. It's my turn. I picked this gift. The fuck we doing here? No, Ellis. It's called the first annual fist anal pine vinyl gift exchange. Exchange being the key word there. He climbed every mountain. Okay, fine. Open it. Okay, I think I will. A remote control. Yeah, it's a good one, too. Yeah, uh, is it like a universal remote? I mean, will it work on my TV? No, probably not. It works on my TV. Okay. That's why I picked it. So, I asked you to bring a gift for the gift exchange, and then you went to the store and bought yourself a new remote. Is that right? No, not at all. Oh, okay. So that means when I asked you to bring a gift to the gift exchange, you grabbed your dirty old remote and wrapped it up. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I must say, Alice, thanks from the bottom of my heart. I'll cherish this remote control always. That's cool, but you need to uh, give that back, though. (laughs) That's my remote for my TV. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll just sit here without absolutely anything. This is exactly how I imagined tonight going. (laughs) Rugburn, you can have my present. I think you will get blown away. Sure, DJ. Thanks. I'll accept your gift. And at this point, I kind of hope it is a bum. (laughs) There's nothing in the box, DJ. Wait, 
There's something on the bottom. Oh, damn, what is it? It's an information card for DJ in case he ever gets kidnapped. You give this card to the police. You're welcome, Rugburn. I didn't say thank you, DJ. Why are you so mad? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Maybe because I put a lot of thought and effort into your gift. Damn, then just keep your own gift and then we're all good. Then we'd be done with this bullshit. That's not how gift exchange works, Ellis. And the gift isn't something I could even use. Why? Would you give me one of them hair picks for my afro? Some racist shit like that? What'd you get me? Did you get me a hair pick for my afro? It doesn't matter. Damn. Read the inscription. Alright, it says, To my best friend, go find some new bitches with some fly hair. Love rugs. It looks like he wrote this with a screwdriver. There's a fork. It's an old fork. I'm kind of low on money this year, okay? So it's homemade. It's a homemade gift. Cool, so... You kind of feel like this probably won't be an annual thing, right? Maybe a one and done? Look, I'm a buck! Damn, DJ, scare my ass! What did you say? Look, I'm a buck! DJ, why are you holding the word run? Aw, oh, damn, should we be running? Motherfucker brought a bomb! Look, I'm a buck! I get it, DJ, I get it, stop saying that. Now tell me, where did you get those letters? Aw, oh, you fucking asshole. Meh! Oh, ho, everybody. Hey, guys. I'm jingling this bell, you know. Come on and donate to the little Red Gan army. Oh, yeah, there you go. Have a good one, you. Boy, it's getting cold to witch's titty out here. I bet it dipped under freezing, starting to get a little slick. Boy, is that the global warming I keep hearing about? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, look at this guy wearing one of those ear things the gals like to wear. Oh, hey, you one of them fancy boys? My son likes those guys, I think. You should give him a call. Yeah, you get, you can go out and and do whatever you guys do. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, right? D come donate to the Red Can Army, yeah? It'll make you feel like one of those hero guys in the movies, like uh, John McClane in Die Hard or uh, Harrison Jones, that guy. Any amount, any amount is good. I mean, it's bigger. a bigger amount is better, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, hey, nice coat. Jesus Christ, why'd you give me a look like that? Just saying, I like your coat, okay? Yeah, I guess I, I, guess I offended her. Boy, people are sure sensitive these days, you know? Back in my day, we used to slap girls right on the butt just to say hello. And you know what? They didn't seem to mind. I mean, they... Sometimes they'd be sad, you know, but they didn't really complain, you know? Now you can't even look at them, goddammit. Bunch of dupas. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I'm not a woman. Oh, geez, yeah, I suppose everybody's everything, right? Yeah. Used to be boys and then there's girls, but now it's... Now it's all mixed up. Thanks, Biden. What's the Red Can Army? Ah, uh, you're looking at it. Yes, but where does the money go? What, the money in the can? I don't know. Well, geez, don't you think you should know? I mean, you're asking strangers for money. Yeah, what's your name? I'm not comfortable telling you that. Well, hello, not comfortable telling you that. My name's Dan. Now we're not strangers, okay? I am not donating if you can't tell me where the money goes, okay? Look, I don't even work here. I saw the bell ring a guy going to the TJ Maxx, take a piss or something, and I thought, eh, I'd help out, okay? So you're standing out here in the cold just to be nice? Well, yeah, it's uh, Christmas season, you know. I don't have a lot of money to give, so I use uh, time. I got time. So this season can get pretty lonely for uh, widowers like me, so I just like to be around people, you know. I do know. I completely know. My husband passed as well, so I know exactly what you mean. Oh, no, that's no good. Yeah. Uh, sorry to, uh, yeah. Uh, so I got a band parked around the corner. 
Hey, Ellis. What was the weirdest thing to ever happen to you during sex? Nope. I promise I'm not trying to bring up something so I can tell my own story, okay? Are you sure? 100%. The weird things that happen to me during sex are the same things that I have forced myself to forget forever and ever. Trust me. Okay. What was the question again? Weirdest thing to ever happen to you during sex. Um, yeah. Oh, you remember Anna? She used to cry when she had orgasms. Really? Yeah, she'd said it was like some big release or some shit. Emotional stuff. But it would just make me feel bad, like I did something. You know, I'd feel terrible. That is awesome. Damn. Why is that awesome? You were actually there when she had an orgasm? What? Yeah, I was there. I, I was the reason for the season, if you know what I mean. I don't think I do know what you mean. So when she was beating the yeast, what were you doing? Wait. What? Ah, uh, nothing. I've just always wondered, you know. Wondered about what? Wondered what happens when a woman has an orgasm. You wonder what? Like, what they look like? Well, have you... You... You never, you never... I was told that the woman has to be alone for it to happen. I tried to peek through the crack of the door once, but she caught me and told me to go home. <laughs> oh, weird, my mom's calling. I wonder what news she has to tell me. Look, Ellis, we're going through space like Trek Wars. It's Star Wars, and slow the hell down, okay? You know I don't like driving in the winter. You don't like driving anywhere because you never, ever, ever drive. You think I want to be navigating through a blizzard to pick up your girlfriend at the airport? You know what? You're right. Yeah, let's just slow down and focus on the road, okay? Calm down, Ellis. I got a V8 in this thing and 200 pounds of salt pellets in the back. This majestic vehicle has made it through four decades of Minnesota winters. Nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. <laughs> Aw, oh, shit, that's not good. I told you, reckless ass, to slow down. God damn it. Yeah, well, all right. Let's just assess the situation. We're inside what appears to be the belly of a snow giant? What's a snow giant? Like in Frozen. I mean, like in folklore. Old folklore. You playing games right now? Well, maybe I am. Maybe I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Okay? Or would you rather focus on the fact that we're buried alive? I told your ass to slow down. Well, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jenny. Look, let's just focus on how to get out of here. Try to start the car. It won't turn over. I bet the radiation cylinder is flooded. Well, how do we unflood it? Uh, no idea. I just made all those words up. God damn you. All right. We have about 18 minutes before hypothermia becomes an issue. Also, a little nervous about the available oxygen. Looks pretty airtight in here. Are you saying we're going to suffocate? Or freeze. One of the two. Maybe a bit of both, actually. Rogue burn. Well, you ready to hear my plan? Yeah, God damn it, Let's go. We'll run out of time. Okay. Our only way out of the car is through your window. Now, I'm not sure what it is we're stuck in, exactly, but if we can dig up, we should eventually find air. It'll be like we're swimming to the top of the pool. Oh, wait, you're black. Um, it'll be like climbing to the top of the ball pit that Hardy's used to have. You remember those? I can swim just fine, motherfucker. Can you really? Oh, wow, good for you, Ellis. Your dad must have taught you. Ooh, I'm done with your ass. Boy, thank the Lord we had extremely handy manual windows to roll down. If this was a modern electronic car, we'd be trapped inside. You better shut up. You're using up the oxygen. Hey, Ellis, where did Jenny fly to? Her brother's wedding. And she didn't invite you? She said it was just a small backyard thing. Have you even met her family yet? No, not yet. Oh, man. Hasn't it been, like, seven months? 
So what? I wonder what she's hiding. Or is it you she's hiding? Why don't you go back in the car, take a nap or some shit, okay? Do they know you're black? Do you think they're cool with it? You know what? I don't know why I wasn't invited to the wedding. And you want to know something else? If she would have asked me to come, I would have gone in a heartbeat. And you want to know something else? I'm worried that she went to see her ex-boyfriend. And when I see her off the plane, she's going to break up with me. That's what I'm dealing with right now. All right? I'm sorry. I didn't know. Damn, why did I buy that ring? Buy that ring? Ring? What ring? Like a blow pop ring? Or a, an O-ring for a faucet? Or a, a ring from that movie about the killer VHS tape? Can't remember the name of the movie. There was two of them. Is that the ring you're talking about? You know what? Forget it. Let's just get out of here. Or we talk about this for a second. What are you about to do, Ellis? Look, her ex-boyfriend is a fool. He left her to go make some money in Chicago. I can't let her make that mistake. Did you buy an engagement ring to make her pick you? You understand why that's a terrible idea, right? Sure. She could see the ring and think, well, you're probably bigger than her ex, right? Like, penis-wise? Wait, is her ex black, too? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, it's is it a super nice ring? <laughs> you know what? Whatever. Let's say she picks you. Who's to say she won't start going on these mysterious trips to her brother's weddings the minute she gets, you know, bored or whatever? You can't propose just because you don't want someone else to have her, Ellis. You propose because you don't want to live without her. I don't want to live without her. Okay. Well, then you better start digging. You boys look like you need a lift. We have code red, terrorist threat, fire when you have the shot, Andrew. No, stop. It's all for love. Oh, okay. Cancel the shot, Andrew. It's all for love. Congrats, guys. So, Jenny, I understand why we didn't work out. You only date black guys. <laughs> it actually makes this so much easier for me, personally. I don't date someone because of their race. I date someone because of love. And I found it. Love, you say? Yeah. Love of big penises. <laughs> right? Two black dudes in a row? Come on. I mean, if you mixed it up a little, maybe a Mexican guy or a Pacific Islander, but you know what? I better save some of this for the best man speech. <laughs> I'm speaking at your wedding, by the way. 100%. Pine vinyl. <laughs>